Hello, in this episode we're starting to look at Playfab login and register. So in some of the previous posts we've looked at integrating with a custom server, then OWS, and now we're going to be taking one off the shelf. So we're going to be connecting with Playfab. Um, and as usual, all the steps on achieving what I've got today can be found in this post. So just have a look through all the details there. It goes through the registration process, installing the, uh, the plugin in Unreal and everything else. So yeah, do check that out. Um, I'll get started with the demo then. So this is what, what it is that we're going to be achieving in this post. So we're going to have ourselves a login screen and also a register screen, which are both connected with PlayFab. So I can go ahead and create myself a user. So it's a user. And uh, part of this, there's going to be some validation. So I'm not allowed special characters. This validation happens uh, inside PlayFab, um, but I am going to be um, showing the errors to the user here. So that's one of the errors there. If I remove the special character, this should be fine now. So uh, if I click register now, it's OK. Uh, and then I can go ahead and log in. So you can see that's working fine. Uh, I'm taken to my uh, character selection screen. Um, I've also prepared the work for character selection and character creation, but we'll look at that in the next episode. So uh, yeah, let's uh, start looking at the code. So perhaps we'll get started with uh, the HUD. So before you can, basically the login and the register screens, they're actually just your widgets and we want to uh, display the widgets when you start the game. So you can achieve that using well, several techniques really, but the Probably the best one I think is uh, using a HUD, which is the heads up display. So to create a HUD, uh, right click, create blueprint, search for a HUD over here. Uh, there it is. So create uh, this blueprint and inside it, you can just specify which widget to create and add to viewport when this starts. And I'm going to create the login widget, right? Uh, then you can also create or you know modify your existing game mode to specify what the HUD class you should load. So you can see there's my character create HUD over there. And then when you have your map open on the world settings, just specify the game mode to load. So what happens is when you open up your map, it then loads up the game mode for that map. The game mode says which heads up display uh, to load up first. Uh, and then uh, the heads up display says on begin play open up this widget. So that's how it's all connected together. So perhaps we'll look into the login widget first. And so um, before we do that, actually, like, uh, let's just make sure that you have the PlayFab um, uh, plugin installed. So it's just this one over here. So just make sure you've installed this uh, to your engine. So you can see I've already installed it. And uh, yeah, just register with PlayFab, you know, make sure it's all configured. All the steps to do that are on the post, so do check that out. Um, and once that's done, you can go ahead and get started with this. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about the design. So that's not the purpose of this video. We're going to be specifically focusing on the API communications with PlayFab. So um, yeah, but in, in general, there's going to be three buttons here, login, quit, register. So let's have a look at the functionalities of those. So uh, the quit and the register buttons are quite simple. So we'll get started with those. When you click uh, quit, we just want to call the function to quit game. Uh, when you click register, uh, I've created another function there to, to go to register, which is uh, creating the register widget, adding that to the viewport and then removing it, uh, this one from parent. Uh, so then if we go back, when you click login, uh, this is where the beefy stuff is at. So what you want to do is call the function to login with PlayFab. So when you install the PlayFab plugin, you're going to have a lot of new functionality available. So it's all over here. And the one that you're interested in is login with PlayFab. So uh, one quick tip is basically uh, you, you don't need to just know which request you need to make. You find the function you want to execute and then you drag the requests out to make those. Uh, so I'm not sure if everyone knows that. Um, and then you can specify the username and password. So those are extracted from the text boxes, right? And then uh, the same is for the events. So you can see me drag the event out and you can click add event. And then you can just populate the name and it pre-fills the uh, output data here as well. So you can see the result and then you can uh, break to see what's inside there. Right, so that, those are just some quick tips um, on basically 
getting through this a little faster. Okay, so when you execute the login with PlayFab, this is an actual API call which gets sent to PlayFab, and you expect one of two responses. One of them is uh, the error response, and the other one is success. So if you get the error, you're going to get this um, generic um, structure back, right? And this structure contains the error message uh, fields, you can see it's over there. And it's already uh, sort of human readable, it's, it's pretty good. So what we do is basically take that error and present it right back to the user. So um, you can see me uh, handling the error over here. And what I do is just create this uh, widget called the error widget and adding that to the viewport. So let's have a quick look at the error widget. All it is is just... Um, a widget which basically has this error content and then a button OK. And uh, when it starts up, I take the parent uh, which I populate when um, I instantiate this widget and then I disable it just so that you know you can't still interact with the background whilst you have the error message in front of you. And you take the error message uh, string that is also part of the constructor and you put it into the uh, text inside the widget as well and then when you click ok you re-enable the parent and remove this one from uh, parent uh, so you can see let's have a look you can see this happening here so there's my error message i feed that in the constructor i provide self as the parent so the login widget itself gets disabled when this one is instantiated um, and that's all we need for uh, handling the error uh, okay, and on success, what we want to do is actually take the result. So this result contains um, all of the login information. So basically, we mainly need the authentication context and the PlayFab ID. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure what else we'll need, you know, in the short term or even long term scenario. So I've uh, only specifically looked at the login and create um, and select character screens. Uh, potentially I'll need more information later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of this into the game instance, which essentially acts as my global variable store. Uh, so that's what you can see me doing here. So in order to do that, um, I've created a game instance. So you can see I've got a folder for game. There's my game instance. So again, you can create that using just this. Uh, you select game instance, click select, uh, create that. And inside, you don't need to do too much, you know, um, I've just populated the variables here. So you can see I've created a new variable called login info and the type is client login result. And um, that's basically it for the game instance. You just need to make sure that you're using this. And the way to do that is clicking edit project settings. And then you can find here game instance and then you just select your game instance over here. And that's what makes sure you use that game instance in your game. Uh, and let's go back to here. So you can see that I get the game instance, I cast it to the main game instance, and then I um, update what the login info there is, and then I can navigate to the character select screen. So that's it for the login, and now we can start looking at the register screen. So the register widget uh, is over here, and again, I'm not going to be focusing too much on the design, but you can see we just need some uh, user inputs, the username, email, password, and there's going to be a button to register and go back. So let's have a look at the functionality over here. So it's even simpler, really. So on a button back, all we have to do is just navigate to the login screen. So very simple, create the login widget, add, add that to the viewport, and then remove the register widget from parent. And then in order to call register, again, we just need to call this uh, method called register with PlayFab user. And again, you can drag out the request to make it, uh, which will provide you this. And uh, what we would needed to populate here is the email, password and username. So you can potentially uh, fill in other information like, you know, display name and things like that. Um, like I didn't see the, the need for that in, in this use case. So uh, this works just fine. So uh, I went ahead and done that. So now you just again need to populate what happens on the success and on failure. On failure, very much the same. Uh, if, if the registration failed, we're gonna get an error back and the error contains the error message and we can present that to the user. So this could be for various reasons, like for example, the email is taken, your username is taken or the password is too short or whatever. So um, 
you can just present that right back to the user so that's really useful and on success we can just navigate back to login and we already had a look into that function already so uh, that's it for the login and register and we can finish off with the demo again so if i log in with my test user so go ahead with that um I'm, i've got the create character screen so this is what we're going to be looking at in the next post so i can go ahead and create a new character so let's give it some different parameters here and then test I'll just call it test character five and there it is so i click create it makes a, a call to playfab to create the character it adds it some custom parameters um it then navigates to the select character screen and there it is populated there so it's able to do that because i've logged in because i have myself the authentication context i have the playfab id and those are the ones that i'm going to be using in subsequent api calls to playfab so we've basically got the prerequisites now to make other api calls with playfab so yeah thanks and see you next time bye